This week in the Get AI Smart series, I'm going to unpack when you use custom GPTs and when you use ChatGPT projects. In case you didn't know, projects and custom GPTs are available for plus and above users. Granted, if you have a free ChatGPT account, you could use custom GPTs in the GPT store, but you need a paid account to build one. But there's always confusion because of their similarities as to when you use which. I want to unpack that for you today and give you a live demo of how I use both of them to elevate my productivity. Let's go. Custom GPTs, this is a little chart I built, leveraging AI. The purpose of custom GPTs are things that you want to repeat over and over again. Think of listing descriptions, think on social media captions, video scripts, specific tasks and roles and workflows where you expect a certain outcome and you would want to build it for it. The other projects, on the other hand, is primarily digital folders. They're private to you, but are more applicable when you're trying to do ongoing work. This is a big one, customization and custom instructions. Although your chat GPT account has the ability for custom instructions, both custom GPTs and chat GPT projects need specific instructions. They don't inherit your account instructions. Okay, I'll show you that briefly as we go into the live demo. Sharing, and this is a big one folks. If you wanna build something to share with a team member or put in the GPT store, custom GPTs are the way to go because projects are not shareable with others at the time of this recording. Set up complexity, pretty easy to set up both of them. Chat GPT projects are probably a little bit more easier uh, than custom GPTs, because uh, you got to think about a little bit about instructions, deeper uh, instructions to build a custom GPT that actually you appreciate and use over and over again. Here's another big one. If you want to integrate your custom GPTs into third-party APIs or other workflows, you can do that with projects. You can only do that with GPTs. Um, memory and context from one use of the custom GPT to the next use of the GPT does not go over, the chat doesn't go over. But in terms of projects, anything you do in the project is an ongoing repository for memory and context. And as you start to see my demo, you'll understand uh, the use case. So use cases we talk specialized assistance, specific things that are, have specific outputs, long-term research, writing, planning is a bit more in the projects area. File handling, user base I covered, both are only available for paid, but ChatGPT free, you could use any GPT in the GPT store, but to build one, you need to pay. File handling, custom GPTs can take up to 20 files, projects, 10, both, in both cases, each file can have about 512 megabytes, don't push the limits, and it, which means a total of 10 gig for custom GPTs. Here it is 10 files. So if you need to sometimes double up on the files and merge two files into one, you may need to do that if you're running out of a number of files you can upload. Uh, you can't cross-reference, best for repeatable tasks, and here it's optimized for ongoing personal tasks. And I'll show you some examples of that and you'll see it. Public discovery, we talked about this, only in the GPT store, not available for projects. It's because it's private to you. Think of it like a folder in your Google Drive if you're a Google user or on your computer, it's a folder. You can't really share it with anyone else. Here, it's GPT store. You're building it for repeatable tasks that you keep to yourself with private links or you have the ability to share or just yourself. Key similarities we talked about, I touched on all of this. GPTs you discover in the GPT store. Type names, you can discover it. As you see, if you type my name in, you will discover all my public GPTs because I'm logged in. It's gonna show you all my GPTs. Some of them are public, some of them are just myself because I'm logged in, but if you log in, you'll only see the ones that I share publicly. And ChatGPT is thinking hard here to pull up my GPTs, there they are. So many of these are publicly available and you click on it and start your use of that GPT. Let me also show you my GPTs just as a list. So if I were to pick one of these GPTs and I hit edit, I think this is important for you to know, I will also click share. I'm not going to update the GPT here, but if I hit share, you'll see this. I can publish it, to the, publish it to the GPT store, which is what this is. The next one is only me, private GPTs. I have a few of those that I use over and over again. Anyone with the link. So if I want to share it with just my team members or others and not publish it to the whole world in the GPT store, that's my option. So those are some of the areas I talked about upload files. In this case, this does not need a, a data upload, but if I click upload files, I can upload 
uh, up to 20 files and I can select the capabilities here of what this GPT is going to do. Right, so that's in a nutshell at a very high level. You can also select the model. It's a relatively new feature. You can select, in this case, I'm actually gonna go and select GPT-40, which is fine. And I hit update and it will, it will update that GPT for others or myself, depending on the permissions I've given it. Let's go to ChatGPT. On the left, you will find, you'll only see this if you have a paid user. So I have a bunch of projects. I have an academy project. Some of you know I'm building in the Real Estate Academy. And if I were to go into there as an example, project files, you can give it up to 10 files. So the files I've given it is I've given it my Real Estate AI playbook. I've given it the PDF. Wherever possible, if you can, give it Word docs or, or CSVs. Text files are more easily digestible. In this case, it's just a slide deck. It doesn't have much imagery that it needs to understand. Sometimes ChatGPT today struggles with reading images in PDF and actually making sense of it. And so if you're relying on it to read images, make sure that data is easily understandable in a text form. So these are the files you can add, add up to 10 files. Uh, instructions, this is the custom instructions for this particular project. And think about the academy. If you were to launch an academy, eight to 10 courses, it's an ongoing living, breathing thing. So that's a great application for projects. And you can see all my chats. And if I were to say, these are previous chats, and here's the other difference with projects versus custom GPTs. You can obviously start a new chat and talk about anything because ChatGPT is your universal assistant. But if you've done chats before, let's just assume this. If this chat, real estate chat GPT exercise that I have here as a chat, I feel it's relevant to the academy. I could very simply click on the three dots and add to any of the relevant projects. So I can move chats to projects uh, or start chats inside of the project. But sometimes you start a chat and say, oh, this is really good data that I'm gathering here, conversation. I want to push it. You can push it. And once you push it in here, it will learn from that and it becomes part of that folder for projects. Good thing to know. The other thing that's a recent addition for projects is especially things like the academy or building a campaign, market stats, things of that nature. You can also do a deep research project and that's a whole other topic that if you're following me, you've seen enough about deep research, great tool. You can run deep research and, it, and whatever the analysis of the deep research is becomes part of the project. Great application for that. You can obviously add photos. I talked about instructions in this case. The instructions are your world-class training specialist with deep experience create digital training content. You've created content similar to Khan Academy and other similar reputable organizations. So that's the overall instructions I've given it. In this case, I really know what I'm doing. I'm just aggregating all my content to create coursework that makes sense and is easy to understand. So see, look, all my chats are in here and it is learning from that. It knows, so if I were to ask it, what were the highlights of course one. So if I were to just type that in, it knows it because the data is there. I've talked about these high level topics. Obviously it's a deeper course than this size pulling out. Ethics, compliant, fair housing, essential AI terms everyone should know. Key mindset, human in the loop, summary and benefits for agents. These were six, seven topics I've covered in course one. It knows it because of, look at this, AI Academy course one. It's referencing the files I've given it and it's contained for an ongoing project. Let's look at a few more project uses. I even have a project for my home. Look, you might be, you might be really good organizationally, but I put all my non-confidential information in the project for things I have contracts for. And it's easy for me to just go in here on my phone, et cetera, to find it. It's an ongoing discovery thing, easy to do. I have one for my playbook. I have one for other campaigns I'm building. I have one for an innovations group that I'm a part of. All of those things are ongoing concept for ChatGPT projects because they don't have a repeatable outcome, which custom GPTs are great for. Hope this kind of gives you the fork in the road when you should use what so you can maximize your AI usage to boost your productivity, you can get time back in your day. Great day, everybody.